there's no right or wrong way to color grade footage, right? Well, obviously there's wrong ways to do it, but in terms of rightness, a lot of it does end up being personal opinion and preference on what looks good. What I'm gonna be doing is taking C100 Mark II footage shot in various locations and be able to grade them in a way that they get them all on a base level where they're matching fairly similarly enough that you can then apply a color grade, a stylized color grade over the top or a LUT uh, from there and be able to have a consistent look. Now I'll be using Adobe Premiere Pro to be doing my color grading, but I'm gonna be addressing it from a fairly uh, foundational level to where you can use DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro to do the same concepts. Apply my Lumetri color to the adjustment layer, and I'm gonna start with curves. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is add some contrast manually using curves. And the reason why I want to do this is because it gives me a little bit more finite control over specific elements of the image rather than just sliding the contrast uh, slider. So what I'm going to do is push up my highlights a little bit, bring down my shadows. Uh, and so we have a gentle S curve here. Now what I want to do is take my highlights and soften that curve a little bit. So I'm going to pull them down from the very top so that uh, nothing is crushing. And same with my shadows uh, down here at the very bottom, bring them up. So the highlights down and the shadows up a little bit. Next, what I want to do is uh, change the color. So you can see this is a very cool tone. Uh, we have a lot of magenta going on here. And what I generally start with is go into basic correction and do a white balance and use the eyedropper. And I just want to see what does it automatically uh, go to. And sometimes that's good enough. A lot of times I don't like the look. And so I end up resetting that and uh, sliding it myself. So uh, I'm going to slide to the warmer tone here and then we'll add some green, remove some uh, magenta uh, so that we get a little bit more realistic color tones. What I really want to focus on are the skin tones uh, here and I'm seeing that we're still getting some magenta in uh, the shadow. And this is where the curves can really help in uh, the color tones of your image compared to just the sliders of temperature and tint. The temperature and tint sliders are a global adjustment. It's the entire image. Curves are where you can isolate the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So if you're not familiar, highlights are up in the upper right corner, shadows are the lower left corner, and midtones are in the middle of your screen. As you push the slider uh, towards the top, you are brightening or increasing the value. As you pull, curve the line down, you are removing or darkening. So uh, the white, this has to do with brightness and contrast, uh, and then you're isolating your RGB channels. So if I go to the next uh, uh, clip, this was shot in the same location. I like uh, what I'm seeing on this image here, and I want to actually go ahead and brighten up some of my shadows. And I can also use the slider. So if I brighten the, the shadows a bit, looking at kind of like the background, but then I pull down uh, my blacks, my black point, that will kind of brighten the image a bit, but uh, not soften, soften the blacks so much that they're more uh, opaque grays. Uh, this adds some uh, darkness to the actual blacks. Now here we jump to another scene in which what I want to do is go over to my hue and saturation. I'm going to uh, isolate the blues in, that are coming in from the window here and desaturate them just a little bit so they're a little less distracting. Another tool that I like to use is the wheels and here I can isolate the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. And I'm going to take the highlights and push them a little bit to the cool. The wheels here a little bit goes a long way. Scroll through this pretty quickly like this to catch if any one of these clips is overall a color tone or a contrast or a brightness that's very different uh, from the others. And if I notice that, then I'll jump in and make those slight adjustments. So the steps are uh, S-curve, 
starting with uh, increasing the contrast by pushing up my highlights, pulling down my shadows, dropping the highest highlights so I'm not crushing anything white, making those a little bit softer whites, and then pulling up my darkest blacks so they're a little bit more milky blacks. And then I will go in and do the color changing with temperature and tint sliders, but more specifically in the color uh, curves, the RGB curves, adjusting the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows of each, paying particular a focus on the skin tones of the subject, as well as anything that is distinctly white in the image and the overall uh, color tone of the background and the subject. So I'll look for are my highlights uh, a certain color shift, is the overall image a certain color shift, and uh, mess with that in the curves. And then use the global sliders for things like the blacks. If I'm uh, bringing up my shadows and reducing my highlights, I want to make black still black and not a milky gray. And so making sure that I can do that uh, with some of those global adjustments. And then just quickly scrubbing through uh, all of the clips and identifying does my eye catch on to, hey, one of these is a little bit more green than the other. Okay, I'm gonna pull out the greens in the curves or slide my tint to a little bit more magenta. From there, it's all fine tuning until I get a nice even match in terms of brightness, contrast, color, and then I can add a global uh, color grade, whether that's a LUT or uh, a more stylized color grade look through adjustment layers and things like that after I have basically matched all the other prior clips. So that's a quick way of how to get all of your C100 Mark II footage to match well. And though I won't be seeing you in the next video, you're sure to see me rough.